Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we are going to paint a nebula and two planets. And to paint our planets, we're going to get super, super messy and we're going to finger paint. So make sure you have lots of paper towels ready. If you don't already, make sure that you follow me on Facebook. Just search for Painting with Jane or check the video description below for a link to my Facebook page. There's also a full list of materials down there. Let's get started. Now to start out with, I've already painted my canvas black. And you can use black paint, black gesso, you can even buy a black canvas if you choose. But I just painted it with black paint. Before we start adding our space nebula cloud things, I'm gonna trace out where I want my moons to be. And I'm gonna do two moons. And the reason I'm gonna trace them out first is so that I can make sure that the really interesting parts of my nebula aren't behind the moon, but also because I wanna know where the moons are because I want to make sure that the nebulas do go behind them a little bit so they don't seem so separate from each other. So I'm going to use this small round brush and I'm going to use white paint, but you can use chalk or whatever you choose. For my larger moon, I'm actually going to use one of my palette plates and this is about seven inches around. You can use any size you like. So I'm just going to set it wherever I think I might like that moon to be, maybe right about there. And I have just a little bit of white paint on this small pointed brush. And I'm just gonna go under the lip of the plate a little bit and outline it. If you have a small chalk or a pencil that will show up on the black paint, you can use that as well. I don't, so I have to use the white paint. Now I'm going to trace another one right about here. So I'm going to use the bottom of my glazing medium bottle. Now we're going to do the fun part and that is scrubbing on the base for our nebula. And I'm going to use this brush. It's an old brush. It's fraying out on the edges. It doesn't hold a good shape, but it's very soft and I'm not afraid to scrub with it and ruin it even more. So it really doesn't matter what kind of brush you use. I would recommend a round one, any type of bristles, any size, just make sure it's a brush you're okay with potentially ruining since we're gonna be scrubbing with it. Now I'm gonna use this brush dry. And the reason I'm gonna use it dry is because that puts the paint on very, very soft. If I use it wet, it smears it a little bit more and I don't like the way that that looks for what I'm doing. So I'm gonna take my dry brush and just dip a little bit of white paint onto it. You see, there's not a lot of white paint here. And so I want the bulk of my nebula over here, but I do want it to go behind the moons a little bit. So I'm just gonna start here with the tip of the brush and just kind of start scrubbing. See how my brush is really flat? And I'm just scrubbing in a really random way, just until all of that paint comes off and there's no more paint moving around. Sometimes I scrub in a circle, sometimes I'll scrub back and forth. Just get it on there in a really random and interesting way. Break up any hard lines before you move on to spread the paint out more. And if it smears the line from your moon, that's okay, don't worry about that. Because it'll just blend in with your nebula. Really, almost pretend like your moon isn't there when you get close to it. Just go over top of it, because that'll help you keep a more natural shape here. And don't be afraid of getting too crazy with this white. If you add too much white, you can always go back, let it dry, and then come back and put a little bit more black over top of it to kick it back. So don't sweat about that. I'd rather have you get too much white on here than not enough. Because once we start glazing the nebula colors over top of the white, you're gonna lose a lot of it anyway. So it's better to have too much than not enough. They can kind of flow together. They don't have to be little separate pieces. 
look at a bunch of different pictures of nebulas online and get an idea of how they move. There's a lot of different ones and they all kind of move different. They're all kind of shaped different. Some of them are super random and scattered looking. Some have patterns in them. And the colors that I'm using are completely optional. You can use any colors you want because again, there's so many different colors in nebula photos that you find. Still just teeny amounts of paint. I'm gonna start brightening up some of these areas. Get some really good white spots in there. I'm using the same amount of paint, I'm just not spreading it quite so far. So I'm not pushing quite as hard on the brush to spread it around. And you can leave some edges that aren't fully puffed out, that have a little bit more of a line to them. Because you might see that in nebulas. If while you're going along adding extra white, you see that happening where it was bright, but the more you went over it, it got darker. That just means that the paint you're working on is still pretty wet. And if you put too much pressure on your brush, you're gonna scrape the paint off below. So either just don't put a lot of pressure on it or get out a blow dryer and dry that part fully before you move on. Now all of these areas, like in here where you can barely see the white, that might get completely lost while you're glazing. So just be aware of that. You can add more after you've even started glazing. You can brighten up that color by adding a little more white or just don't apply, apply heavy glaze to it there. Now while we glaze, we still wanna use this brush dry and I had to clean it off because it had white paint on it. So make sure you have a paper towel and dry out that brush as much as possible. Really squeeze the water out. If you're lucky enough to have several brushes like this, then you can use a new brush every time. But if not, just really scrub it out on a paper towel until it's as dry as you can possibly get it. So now I have my glazing medium and I'm gonna use just a tiny drop of it. Just about like that. Remember that the glazing medium dries really quickly, so if you put out too much on your plate, it'll start to get really thick and heavy by the time you're done with it. So I'm gonna start with my phthalo blue, and I'm gonna load up with glazing medium. And remember, the more glazing medium you use and the less paint you use, the more transparent the color is gonna be. Alternately, if you use less glazing medium and more paint, the color is gonna be less transparent. So I want this first layer of blue to be fairly transparent. So I'm going about 50-50. And I'm gonna start scrubbing this in. Now, I don't wanna just scrub it on randomly, and I do wanna leave a little bit of white. So I think I'm just gonna start here and just kinda of start scrubbing it around and letting it fade out a bit. I don't wanna cover this whole white spot, so I'm using very light pressure there where I'm scrubbing it in and then harder here where I really wanna put a lot of the color. And I know I'm gonna get asked a lot of questions, do I have to use glazing medium for this? No, you don't have to, but I feel like you'll get a much better result if you do. You can always just mix white with the color rather than laying the white down first. 
but I don't like to do that because then I get a light blue. And I mean, I know this looks like a light blue here, but mixing white with the color is different than laying a transparent color over white. This is still the exact same blue as it is when it's darker. It's just more transparent so you can see the white through it. Where if I mix the white with it, I get a much more pastel blue. And they just look totally different. But if that's the look that you want, then you can definitely do it that way. So I'm gonna add this blue all over before we move on to our next color. I'm just gonna take it right to the edge of that because I wanna leave that edge of that cloud pretty white. Just break up any hard lines and definitely take it over the black. Even though it's very transparent, it will tone the black just a little bit. Especially once we add some stars, you'll be able to see the color when you layer it over the stars. I'm really just scrubbing here until there's absolutely no more blue coming off. I'm kind of concentrating the heavier blue, the darker blue, to the paler part of the clouds. That helps create a little bit of distance, thins them out and kind of pushes them back a little bit. These brighter parts, I want to seem much denser and brighter. That's why I'm not putting such dark blue over top of it. Get a little bit more glazing medium whenever you need. Now with my glazing medium, I've had a lot of people ask me if they can use gloss medium instead. And gloss medium is essentially the same thing and you can use it as a varnish too. I'm not sure if Liquitex is doing away with the glazing medium and just putting out a general gloss medium. But when I went to buy some recently, I couldn't find any glazing medium and where it was, they had gloss medium instead. So I did buy gloss medium this last time and I noticed absolutely no difference between it and the glazing medium that I was using before. So if all you can find is gloss medium or even matte medium, you can use that. I haven't used matte medium as a glazing medium, so I'm not sure how it would be different can't imagine it would be terribly different, but if all you have is matte medium, give it a try and see how it goes. And see, while I'm adding this fairly randomly, I am kind of planning out where I want it. So I'm not just scribbling it everywhere and not really paying attention to where it goes. I'm kind of planning out where I want to see my next colors. So I'm gonna glaze with two other colors, so I wanna leave a little bit of room for them, but I also want them to mix. So when I lay down the quinacridone next, I want it to mix or glaze over top of the blue to create a really gorgeous purple. So where I think I want the quinacridone, like up in this area, I'm gonna put some of the blue so I get that nice purple. So just be purposeful where you're putting your colors. And it might take you a few practices before you decide how you like to lay down your colors. This is something I've been working on for a while and I'm just now ready to start showing you guys how to do it. So if you don't get this on the first try, don't be hard on yourself. I didn't either. All right, I'm just gonna darken up a couple of spots with a little less medium and a little more blue. And then we'll move on to our next color. 
And here I'm not gonna scrub it out quite so much. I'm gonna let it be nice and dark. So I'm using very light pressure just to break up the edges rather than scrubbing it really hard, which really spreads the paint around. So see if you can tell how much pressure I'm putting on my brush there. Just the very end of it, just to softly sweep that color around. And then harder when I want to lay down more color. So I laid that down with some pretty good pressure. And now just very lightly to break up the line. So if you watched my Buddha painting where we were doing glazing for the first time, you know that there's this stage while you're glazing where you're just looking at it going, oh, that looks so terrible. But if you hang there, hang in there with it, as soon as you start adding more colors, you start to see the big picture and it starts looking better and better. So don't judge it just yet. If you get a little crazy and you feel like you added too much of the blue, that's okay. You can glaze more white over it or even some black. All right, I think I like that. I think I'm done with the blue. So I'm gonna get my blow dryer and I'm gonna dry this so that when I start laying down the quinacridone, it doesn't pull the blue up off the canvas. So clean off your brush, dry it off super good with the paper towel, get this dry and then we will add more layers of color. Actually, we're gonna do one more thing before we start adding the next layer of color, and that is we're gonna add some stars. So I'm gonna take my one inch flat brush. I wet it in the jar pretty good and then just wiped a tiny bit off on the edge. And I'm gonna take some white paint and mix a little bit of white in here until I have a nice runny color. And to get as much of that water in your brush as possible, put your brush flat right where it runs and then tilt your plate. See how it's running into my brush? I'm gonna pick up a lot of that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my brush maybe three or four inches from the canvas, put my finger at the top and just start flicking it. If you get one that kind of streaks like that one, you can just kind of tap it in. Since this is a nebula anyway, that doesn't really matter. Flick those stars everywhere. You can get some that are concentrated in little clusters like I kind of like to do that where I plan on leaving the, the, a little bit more of the white. Don't worry about getting it on top of where your moons are. You're gonna paint over all of that anyway. The wetter your paint is, the bigger your stars are gonna be but then I feel like the splatters are a little harder to control. So maybe practice with it if you're not too sure. Told you we'd be finger painting. So this is kind of where we begin. So make sure you've got some paper towels on hand for your hands. The stars dry pretty quick, but maybe just give them a second to completely dry before you start. So in my race to record a video for you this week, I'm a little bit behind. I decided that if I wasn't behind enough already, I should be a little bit more behind and hang some art on the walls before the video. So that's what I did. But I did it the wrong way and I hung it all up with masking tape. And so we had a casualty already. I had a painting fall. So this is just a lesson for you. Don't hang paintings up with masking tape. And don't do it five minutes before you have to film a video that you're already 24 hours late on. All right, so my brush is dry. I've got more glazing medium and I'm gonna use this quinacridone now. And that's not a color that I use very often, but after using it today, I find that I really like this color. So maybe I'll have to use it a little bit more often. So again, about 50-50 glazing medium to paint. So the same thing, I'm just gonna kind of start scrubbing it on. Do not try to avoid the blue. Go right over top of it. 
and remember to use just the end of the brush to feather it out where you want to keep some brighter spots. Press harder to lay down a little bit more paint. See how nice those colors are when you glaze them over top of each other? Now we're starting to get some depth. That purple really helps make it look like you've used a lot more paint colors than you actually have and creates more depth in the sky. And I like to glaze over some of the stars too because it pushes them back behind the nebula and the stars that stay white, they look a little bit closer or just not covered by the nebula. So don't avoid your stars either. Super light pressure there so I can keep that nice and bright. And harder pressure here. See, it looked really strange before when all we had was the blue on there. But now that we're adding some of this magenta, we're getting a lot more depth. And it's actually starting to look like space. But I am planning on glazing with one more color after this, so I still don't want to fill everything up. I like that really deep, dark magenta there, so I'm just going to fuzz out this line and leave that super dark. I tried several different colors before I settled on this magenta. And I didn't even think about it at first because since it's a color I never use, I didn't even consider it. But when I used purple, I felt like the purple over the blue, there was just way too much purple going on. So I decided to try out the quinacridone and I'm really glad I did. I like it a lot. But while I was searching images of different nebula, I found pictures with orange and yellow and even green. So if you don't have these colors or you don't like these colors, get creative. Use whatever colors you like. I really don't think that you could use a wrong set of colors. I've even seen pictures of nebulas with brown and reds. And from what I understand, and I could be totally wrong, but from what I understand, the pictures that you see of nebulas are all colorized based on the type of gases and elements that are in them. Certain colors, certain elements or gases show up blue, certain ones show up yellow or magenta. So they're all colorized anyway. Just do it however you want to do it. Right before we let this dry, let's do one more layer of stars. So super wet white paint again. I'm actually gonna make this a little bit runnier, I think, than before so I can get some bigger stars. So those smaller stars are gonna seem more distant, more distant because they're smaller and they're covered by a lot of the nebula. These ones I'm gonna make a little bit bigger so they seem closer. And the slower you flick, the bigger they become. See, if I flick really fast, it's a very fine spray. But if I fit, flick slow, they're a little bit bigger. Except my paint was running out, so they weren't. There, that's pretty runny. That's going to give me some big stars. See? Make sure that you are protecting your ground if you care about it. I don't really care about this carpet, so I'm not. And I'm just going to tap out those stars. They were a little bit much for me. I kind of like the way that looks, so I'm good with it. Just 
Told you we were gonna finger paint today. We're just starting a little early. I kind of like that, the little spray that I'm getting off of tapping that white in with my finger. So I think I'm gonna do that a little bit here and there. Okay, let's dry this off and then we'll add our final color to the nebula. Okay, so my brush is clean and dry and I got more glazing medium. And what I'm gonna do now is mix a little bit of phthalo green with some white. And this color, when I put it on, I'm gonna put it almost like I can't even see these other colors. I really want it to be like a fringe color that doesn't really seem too terribly connected to this. But I'm gonna scrub it on pretty hard so that it's not too thick. Since I'm mixing white with it, it could easily take over and hide a lot of these details. I just want it to be almost a ghost of a color. So I'm gonna actually mix it up first before I get my glazing medium. So just a little bit of green. Mix it in with my white to get this kind of minty aqua color. And then I'll mix my glazing medium in with it. And I'm letting it be a little bit cloudier than some of the other ones. Just kind of break up any lines that are in it, but let it kind of fuzz out. And if you feel like there's not enough green in there, just add a bit more. And I'm using about 50-50 glazing medium to paint. Not trying to cover all of the black. I still want a little of my black to show. So this color is just very, very much an accent color. And mostly the reason I'm using it is because it's not quite as transparent because of the white. So it gives the clouds a little bit more substance. Stand back if you have to and decide if there's any areas you want to add more of it to. I'm mixing it up just a little bit darker green than I did at first. Okay, I'm going to add one more layer of stars with some pretty wet paint. Let it run down into your brush, pick up as much as you can. And really these stars, I'm just kind of concentrating in the green area. That one got a little crazy. Oh, all of those did. That's all right because I've decided I like the way that that looks when I tap them out. See, happy accidents. Things can happen the way you did not plan on them happening, and it can turn into something that you absolutely love. So that's why I don't get frustrated. I don't let accidents bring me down. I'm going to add just a couple more of those little polka dotty parts. All right, there's your nebula. So now we're going to paint in our planets or moons, whatever they are to you. And then we're going to start finger painting. Now, 
If you don't follow me on Facebook, you should. Just search Painting with Jane on Facebook and you'll find me. Over there, I give you guys hints as to what's coming. Everybody shares their paintings and it's a really supportive and awesome community. So you should come check it out. Earlier this week, I gave a hint that we were gonna be finger painting and everybody got super excited. So let's talk about the finger painting first before we begin. If you're gonna finger paint, please be aware of the type of paint and the color that you're using. So for example, if you want a red planet and you wanna use cadmium red, please make sure that you're using cadmium red hue because cadmium is very toxic and you don't want that on your skin absorbing into your bloodstream. If you're not fully sure about how toxic a paint is or not, you can use gloves, wear gloves on your hands or even get like a sandwich bag and put your hand in there and do it that way. You could use a paper towel. You could even use a palette knife if you really want to. But if you're gonna get the paint on your skin, just be aware of what you're using. Now the paints that I'm using, the Liquitex Basics, are student grade paints. So from what I believe, for the most part, there's not a lot of toxic dyes in there. But also, as soon as I'm done using a color, I will wipe it all off of my hands completely. So what we're gonna do first is paint in our large moon with the base color. And I'm gonna use a mixture of the white and phthalo green like we did with the little clouds in the background here. I'm gonna lay the paint on very thick so that when I start finger painting over it, it's still a little wet and I get a nice drag between the colors. So I'm gonna start by mixing phthalo green and white. And as you can tell, I started finger painting a little early. My phthalo green exploded all over my hand when I opened it. Now let me show you how to draw your edge here with this brush very, very easily. So I have my brush loaded up with paint and I'm gonna plant my hand right here in the center of the planet. And I'm gonna use my brush almost like the hands of a clock. So I'm gonna put the edge of the brush right up to the line and I'm gonna rotate my hand from the center where it's planted. See how I'm not crushing in the end of the brush. I'm just using the very edge and look at what a crisp line I'm getting. all the way around. So up here where my line was kind of crazy, just doing it like this, I was able to cover that up. That's why I wasn't worried about it when I put it on there and that line wasn't straight. Now the reason I did it that way rather than this way is because when I put pressure on my brush, the bristles get wider and see how it fuzzes out. Then you have to go back over it and you run the risk of going outside of that line and ending up with a really fuzzy moon. But when you use the edge of the brush, if you need to stop and get more paint, you can easily start right back up at that line. Now that I have that line, I can fill it in. Now we're gonna paint all over top of this, so don't worry about your brush directionality. Just get a good amount of paint and really fill it in. You can fill it in up and down, side to side, whatever. You don't have to do it in a circle. I'm just concerned that the paint is covered and thick. Now before that dries, we're gonna start finger painting. So decide where you want your planet to be highlighted and low lighted. I want my planet to be highlighted along this edge and low lighted along this edge. So I'm gonna start with my highlight. I'm just gonna dunk my finger straight into the white and start just wiping it down the edge. Don't be too terribly worried about going outside of the edge of the planet. Get right up to it. If you go outside the edge of it, just take a damp, clean brush and wipe it away. And then I'm gonna streak it in 
Now remember, a planet is curved, so you don't want to just streak down like that. That's not gonna make it look like a curved ball. It's gonna make it look flat and not like a planet. Just add that highlight wherever you want it down the side that you chose. It doesn't matter which side you do. If your background color is too dry and you're getting too much drag, you can see the texture of the canvas, just grab a little more of that color and a little more of your white and streak it in. The lighter the pressure that you use, the less likely you are to smear the base color down into the white. But I think it's okay if it smears into there. So I did go outside the edge of my planet a little bit, so I'm just gonna take a damp, clean brush. And just like we drew the line of the planet, I'm just gonna do that again and wipe it away. So all of my lines here are kind of curved. So if I were to draw one all the way across, it would kind of be about like that. So that's about the shape that you're trying for. So while I was getting ready to do this video for you, I knew I wanted planets, but I didn't want just cheesy looking, solid ball of color planet. I wanted it to, you know, kind of look like Jupiter with the swirly storms. And I had laid down a bunch of paint on a planet I was working on and I really hated the way it looked. But I just kept adding more and more paint, trying to mess with it. And pretty soon the paint I had done with the brush was pretty thick. And so I just swiped over it with my finger and realized, oh, that looks exactly like what I'm going for. So I decided we were gonna do some finger painting then. And notice I've got the green and the white, they're not totally mixed on here. Let's mix up some more of that color. And now let's low light the other side. So I'm gonna get some phthalo blue and I'm gonna do the same thing as I did with the white. I'm just gonna run it down the edge and streak it in. And if it's too intense, just get some more of your green. And the blue doesn't have to be exclusive to this side. This is just where I want it concentrated more to give the illusion of darkness on this side of the planet. Mix up some more of that green just to get a good blend. Just remember, get right up to that edge. You can always erase any paint that gets outside of it, but if you don't go far enough to the edge, then it's not really gonna look like a planet. It's gonna look like some kind of a ball with colors streaked on it. So let that get right up to the edge. Don't be afraid of it. Clean up that little spot that got out. Oh, it looks like I have another one right here. See, I keep going outside of the line too, so don't sweat that. Do it. Oh, I stuck my finger, or my side of my hand in some. I kind of want a Jupiter-like storm over here, so I'm gonna just kind of wipe that blue in there. And then with a clean finger, just lightly swipe over it a bit. My inspiration for this planet was Neptune. 
I just love Neptune. It looks so serene. I'm using very light pressure with my finger. I'm barely, barely touching to lay down some heavier color that doesn't streak in as much. Just keep adding it until your planet looks exactly like you want it to look. Wipe off your hands really good when you're done. All right, now we're gonna fill in our small moon with quinacridone. And I'm using the round brush I scrubbed the background on with, but whatever you're comfortable with. I'm gonna do it the same way, just kind of pivot from the center. And this quinacridone is a little more transparent so I can see the sky through it, but I'm not worried about that because Again, we're gonna add quite a bit of paint over top of it. All right, now on this planet, I'm gonna do my highlight on the other side, but you can do it on the same side if you like. So I'm just gonna run a bead of white down the edge and swoop it in. And I think I'm actually gonna do this planet a little different than I did the other one. But I'm still gonna add my highlight on first before I decide. Remember, don't be afraid to get outside of that color or outside of the edge of the planet. It cleans up easily. There's my highlight, and I'm gonna take a clean finger with some blue and do the low light on the other side. Wipe my hands off really good. And now I'm just gonna kind of smear these colors together a bit. I want this planet to seem a little bit softer. This, the first one seems more like a gas giant to me. This one seems like a very small, hazy planet in the distance. So I'm gonna kind of swirl it. If you have too much paint on there, just wipe off some of it with your finger. Not a big deal. And I'm really getting outside of the lines of this planet. But notice I'm not worried about it. A tiny drop more white. Just keep this side nice and bright. Clean up that edge a bit. I just want to add one more little swipe of light right there. And there is your nebula and finger painted planets. I hope you guys had a great time painting and getting completely messy with me. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the paintings that you do out of this. Also, a quick shout out to my friend Gwen on Facebook who suggested that all of my followers and everybody who paints along with me be referred to as art monsters since I made a, an art monster out of her and so many other people. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and come find me over on Facebook. Just search for Painting with Jane. Let me know how you like finger painting and any other techniques that you'd like to see. So thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time.